Hey, this is Michelle with the Variety Radio Online, and we're at DragonCon 2015, and I'm so excited to have with me Paul Amos. Welcome. Yes, nice to be here. Yeah, so you've been in Georgia for a few days. Are you having fun? Yeah, I'm having fun. I think I'm just recovering uh, from the hangover I got from the last DragonCon. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I'm, fi I'm finally just steadying the ship. Yeah. No, it's been good. I've been here for a couple of days uh, just visiting friends. Uh, yeah. And in Peachtree City, yeah. It's a great area. Um, now, DragonCon. You've been here several times. What do you really love about DragonCon? Uh, besides the hangovers. Besides the hangovers, um, well, I tell everyone because we, you know, we obviously get asked a lot on the on the con circuit. You know, what what cons do you like? What are the better ones? And I always say Dragon Con is by far the best one. And I've actually only done it once. I don't know whether I'm looking through, you know, tinted, you know, alcoholic lenses. But um, no, it was it was amazing. The first one we did, the response uh, from the fans was awesome. Yeah. And um, it just seems to be it's the fan con. Mm -hmm. And really, that's the one you want to be at. And everyone seems to be having a lot of fun. They seem to be partying a lot. Um, um, but they're, they, you know, they're, they're all about it. And these people have obviously been saving like all year for, for this thing. Um, and having just been to San Diego Comic Con, this um, this still rocks it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping uh, 15 is going to rock the same way. Absolutely, yeah. we do both. And Dragon Con definitely has so it's so personable with the fans, mm -hmm. and um, they're amazing. Speaking of fans, what's some of the fun things as far as cosplay or costumes you've ever seen? Oh, well, I mean, I love the walk that they do here. You know, the the walk, here, you know, the zombie walk. That's always fun. Yes. Um, being a bit of a fan of Walking Dead and and Fear the Walking Dead and all that. Um, uh, I have a daughter, so uh, the whole idea is of seeing the princesses the whole time. I just generally go around taking pictures of, I mean, I'll, I'll probably look like a dirty old man, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but that's what I do. I go around, now, I hope you don't mind, I'm just going to take your picture. I, honestly, I have a daughter, she's three, honestly, she loves the princesses. You know, yeah. the cosplayers here, they love their picture being made. So yeah, you're absolutely. fine. They're so fine, you're, I know, you're, you're, even if I do look like a dirty Absolutely. Old man. Yeah. Let's jump a little bit first, um, Lost Girl. Mm -hmm. um, sorry we're at the point we're at, but what was some There's of the no really... Sorry. There's no sorry, it's fine. Yeah. You know, everything's got to come to an end. Yeah. It's nice, you know, we, we knew it was coming to an end, which mm -hmm. was an advantageous position, I think, for the writers and uh, the creators, so they, they actually could plan for the end. So. We split the last season into two eights, and uh, you know it was a good chance to finalize a lot of the arcs, yes. a lot of the stories, which some shows don't get to do. Sometimes they start going into production on their season, then all of a sudden they get, they get the pull, you know, the plug gets pulled really late in the game. But I, I think we knew for quite quite a while that this was going to be the case, and you know a lot of us, it's time to move on and right. other things. But this is uh, it's been an incredible journey. Um, and I think people will be, you know, really happy with with what we do in the end, and we really do close the arc really well. I think. I think I'm excited to see some of the some of the closure. So that'll be great. Yeah, right. yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. I think people will be happy, and it will be sad when it ends. I mean, mm -hmm. it's been a really good show t for us, and um, you know, it was a little bit of an anomaly. You know, the little show that could and. It's, uh, it is sad because, in some ways, because the show seems to be growing exponentially, it's really weird. I think because of Netflix and the way people are actually watching their entertainment now in not traditional formats, is that we turn up to a lot of these cons and all of a sudden there's like somebody who'd never seen the show like, like a week or so ago. And then they're at the con, you know, trying to meet everybody and get everybody's signatures because all of a sudden they've, they've binged watched it and they've become super fans. Um, and I think the show is gathering this other kind of audience, which is, uh, which is really interesting. Um, I think a lot of shows are finding that, though. Um, you know, even look at things like Firefly and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's a classic example of, of a show that, you know, probably in the traditional format would have slipped away. Yeah. But because of the way people watch their entertainment now, um, a lot of people are finding that because it's, it's freely available. And, uh, it's amazing how many brown coats and stuff you'll see walking around that, mm -hmm. that are dressed up in uh, Serenity. And, and of course, that was a short life of Firefly and Serenity, but amazing. I, I, that is a total Fall. anomaly for me. I still can't actually believe that that is, is a thing. Yeah. That people are still over such a short amount, uh, like a small amount of body of work. Yeah. And people are still like, yeah, this, that was the one. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I would admit that I, I camped out to see the reunion at Comic Con. See, there you go. I, there you go. See, so that's I would, the point. Yes, crazy, crazy. <laughs> um, what do you take away? What is one of the things with uh, fixing it? What do you take away from Lost Girl? Uh, what do I take away from Lost Girl? Uh, I got a chance to play like a character that you don't usually see on television. Mm -hmm. um, and to create a character like that was really, really interesting. Um, I doubt whether I'll really get to play many characters like that again. Uh, and that's, that's been, that, that was really good to try and you know, develop a, a really outlandish character on television and trying to give him multiple layers and uh, on, a, on a show that was pretty, you know, groundbreaking in lots of senses for lots of communities because not only Vax, but a lot of other characters were, were people you don't usually see on TV. Um, and they were, you know, representing a, a class of society and, a, and, a, and, you know, a, a person that would like to see themselves on TV. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know, we had a lot of fun doing that and it was good to be part of that show. And, and I think since, a lot of other shows have, have taken that route. But, you know, if you go back to when we started, there, were, there wasn't too many shows like that on the air through yeah. dealing with pushed, those issues and right. yeah, pushed a lot of uh, boundaries in our fun little way, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I saw on Twitter a great picture of you and James, and um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, saw some of the tweets afterwards. I think that somebody mentioned, uh, "What would your uh, idea of a Spike and Vex kind of a Spike and Vex spin-off?" No, yeah, that'd be fun. Wouldn't With it? I know. I, I saw several people talking about it. I was like, "Okay, that would be really cool." Yeah, just I mean, in the corner in the pub talking about chips and lost hands. Yeah, yeah. it's like, <laughs> okay, so what happened? Um, yeah, no, they were fun. He was fun, and yeah, uh, yeah it was it was interesting uh, meeting somebody who was basically the other version of what you play in, in a show that's very similar to yours. It was like yeah. a parallel universe sort of thing at Dragon Con. Yeah. yeah, he's a nice guy. He's cool. Yeah, he's a good musician too. Aww. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, that's right. He has album and stuff. Um, Assassin's Creed. Yes. Let's jump over to voices. Do you uh, game, first of all? Uh, I was a big gamer up until I had a daughter, yeah. Okay. And then my missus kicked it out. <laughs> and then I got this job and then I bought a PS4 because you can write it off. <laughs> <laughs> When can you get it to write off a PS4? Not usually. Not, yeah. yeah, I don't know if that happens. So no. talk about Assassin's Creed. Uh, Assassin's Creed was great. We did full mocap. Um, so it's not, just, it's not just the voice anymore. I, th I think people have to start realizing when you make these games and you're doing the cutscenes in these huge franchise games, it's actually like making a movie. So it was a really tough gig to get, but I really wanted to do a video game, especially after coming out of the series. I think it's a smart thing to do. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we filmed it for nearly four months, uh, six days a week, full motion capture. Um, and then, you know, we did about two, two and a half months on voice in the booth um, and, you know, marketing and we're still going and right up until release. And it was a, it was a really epic experience on uh, one of the world's biggest video game franchises. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see how people respond to it. I think we've done a really good job. Um, the, the word on the street is that, you know, I think we may have, have, have one of the better ones yet. So um, it's going to be, and it's in a beautiful time period, you know, mm -hmm. Victorian England, which was <laughs> great for me because I don't have to do too much with my voice. Uh, uh, the character's really fun. There's a female playable character. So, you know, it's nice to be part of a video game franchise that's breaking boundaries too. Um, and I think with, with this one as well, with a female playable character who's awesome, and Victoria, who plays the, you know, the character does a really good job. Uh, we, I had so much fun. It's a, like an absolute midpoint between theater and film. So I've done a lot of both now. Uh, so it was a great utilization of all of this like skills or whatever that I've acquired and you know, being a professional for 12 years. Yeah, it was, was a little bit of challenge doing, um, doing the film capture. No, not for me. I, it's something I, I, I really enjoy craft and, and, and technique and, and, and that sort of stuff within what we do. Uh, and there's a lot of that involved because you've got the full bobbly suit on and mm -hmm. you've got the black plague spotted face and you know there's all these obstacles in the way to try and create a scene that works. Um, but uh, I, I found that uh, you know highly entertaining from, for myself. It was almost like playing a game. Yeah. Uh, but filming the scenes was kind of like playing a game because there was a there was a sort of thing with you couldn't overlap on the voice if I'm doing a scene with you. You couldn't make a sound when I'm talking, nothing. Like you can ruffle anything and you couldn't start talking. You have to start talking as soon as I finished, but you have to give a tiny little bit of gap. So it's almost like playing a video game because 
if you didn't get it right, you didn't get the scene, and you'd have to do it again. So it was like, ah, uh, eh, eh, you lost your life, and you can see your lives up there before Ubisoft fire you for like taking too much time, yeah, <laughs> and costing too much money because it's a really expensive process, mocap. It's like really expensive, um, and I was amazed on these games how much they cost. Like, I, like the budget for AC is, uh, you know, it's bigger than Avatar. Wow. So, you know, in terms of everything and the marketing. So they spent a lot of money on these games and a lot of money in marketing. And the, the industry is bigger than movies now anyway. So it's sort of, it's pornography, then video games, and then movies. And, you know, pornography and video games are just going to come together at some point. Then we're all doomed. We're just all going to be sitting in rooms somewhere. <laughs> With the Oculus, just enjoying life. With alcohol. <laughs> With alcohol. You know, the intravenous drip of alcohol. and. In caffeine, and okay. Porn and video so. games, awesome. Yeah, there you go. That's the future. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, We're in yeah. trouble. Matrix got it wrong. There was a lot of porn involved. <laughs> you just didn't know about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, to post projection, you've got some other things going on. Can you talk about anything you have on the side? I saw two things um, uh, listed. So. Uh, oh, me? Uh, no, not too much. It's been a bit of a grueling process uh, making the game. Uh, like six days a week for four months was was pretty intense and we they we've done a lot we were at San Diego I've been at other cons so mm -hmm. it's been a little busy because we finished law school last October and then I got this game in November and we pretty much started working on it on the December so I've gone right through ah uh, yeah so I mean I've just started looking at other projects okay. and stuff to do right now but um, it comic-con did mm -hmm. you go out to that Assassin's Creed um Optical course? What do you mean, did I go out to it? Did you do I it? I set the course record. Oh, that's right. I did see that on Twitter. <laughs> Damn, sorry. Yes. Yes. I set the course record. <laughs> There's a story behind that because like, I got called out on the panel um, in front of like, I don't know, 3,000 people that we had there or whatever by Victoria, who'd already done it twice. So uh, I woke up and she obviously said 11 o'clock in the morning, which I thought I'll have a hangover at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, but anyway, I turned up at the uh, American Ninja AC course, and I, I'm there waiting, the press are there, they've got lots of people there, and all of a sudden the woman at the front is like, okay, you're next, and I'm like, uh, all right, I guess I'm next. So I'm getting up, you know, I'm ready to go, so, and, and the first bit, you can either do the one that you go up, or the really steep uh -huh. incline, so I thought, I've got to do the legit one. If I can get past this, I'm done. So I run at that thing, and I run at it so hard that I pull my muscle in my leg, but I get up and I grab myself up, I do the zip line, do the thing, do the spider crawl, do the net, jump over, hit the thing. Okay, what was my time? And all the Ubisoft people are there going, what were you doing? And I was like, well, I ran the course. And they were like, no, we're not ready. We're gonna do it now. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? I've injured my leg, I can't possibly do it again. So Victoria refused to go for it first, then they all wanted to take our pictures. Then the person was on the town eye going, and now we have Paul Amos and the real Jacob Fry. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm like not gonna be able to do this thing. So I run up to the beginning and I'm like, I guess I have to do it. So I ran that thing two times in a row, second time, ran through it and hit the button and set the course record at 36 for the weekend for four days. Nobody beat that time. And I think it was just the adrenaline of knowing that I needed to do it and there was a big crowd and like yeah. I couldn't possibly be the assassin that, you know, gimped out. <laughs> so yeah, it was kind of, I, I mean, I was in pain afterwards, but uh, hey, I got the course record, yeah, so hey. it counts. Well, good luck in the future. And we always, as you know, enjoy having you on the Variety mm -hmm. Radio online. And yeah. uh, we really appreciate you. And I hope you have a great weekend. Yeah. Oh, no, it's going to be fun. Yeah, I think I have enough booze packed. <laughs>